Our guest today is widely regarded as the greatest player ever to set foot on the tennis court. He's Roger Federer, I'm Anjali Rao, and this is Talk Asia. <laughs> the world of tennis, Roger Federer is the undisputed number one, holding his position for a record 200 consecutive weeks. At just 26 and with 12 Grand Slam titles to his name, the Swiss star is often called the best tennis player ever. Federer won his first Grand Slam title in 2003, but he has yet to conquer the French Open and thus the Grand Slam Quartet as his arch-rival Rafael Nadal continues to reign the clay court. Known as the Mr. Nice Guy of tennis, Federer serves as a goodwill ambassador for UNICEF and has his own foundation supporting children. We catch up with him in Macau on the eve of his showdown with former number one Pete Sampras. Roger, welcome back to Talk Asia. It's marvellous to have you with us again. My pleasure, thank you. It's been quite a year for you, hasn't it? How would you rate it? Well, excellent. It uh, couldn't almost be any better. I really um, played great, you know, in the big, big tournaments this year. Um, this is really what my big focus is, obviously, at the moment that, you know, I, I can play well at the majors and, uh, and hopefully finish the, the year off nicely in, in Shanghai. And I won four of the five big ones and was in the finals of the French Open, which was just great. And um, protect my number one ranking again, won Wimbledon for fifth straight, which was really important to me, equaling Bjorn Borg's record. So it's great now, looking ahead to 2008, obviously. You were that close to getting all four major titles in the one go, and it just didn't work at the last hurdle. What happened? Well, what happened, Rafa Nadal was there, unfortunately. <laughs> Rafa Nadal yeah, happened, he's around, you know, that's a bit of a problem, but uh, I mean, it's okay, he's great for the game. and. Uh, He's, he's the toughest player on clay for the last three seasons and I knew I wasn't maybe the big favourite, you know, going into that final. Um, I've had actually the same situation for the last two years now. I've won three majors and lost in the finals of the fourth, you know, at the French Open. But, uh, you know, I grew up on clay as well, so it's not like a surface where I don't feel comfortable on. But the thing is with Rafa, he's only played on clay his whole life long and he wins so many matches prior to the French Open that he comes into the tournament so confident. And uh, on clay I just feel like there's a bit more opponent then on maybe on Harkon and Grass for me and this is why it's it's hard you know but I'll keep working and hopefully one day I'll, I can fulfill my dream by winning the French Open. Everybody loves to talk about the you know, rivalry between you mm. and Rafael Nadal, he's your arch nemesis on the court. Mm. What about off the court? He's very respectful towards me, I have unbelievable respect for him because he's already won three Grand Slams and I never had a Grand Slam at his age you know so it really tells you how, how, what a great player he is and how good he is for the game. Now it's calmed down, you know, we really have a good relationship on and off the court and uh, that's the way I like it, you know, mutual respect and uh, I think in the future we're going to have many more matches now, we've all, all played over 10 times now and just played the, the epic finals obviously at Wimbledon which was great for our rivalry. The French Open continues to elude you, one imagines that the next time that you play you will probably be up against Rafael Nadal again. Does that mean that it's never going to happen for you, do you think? No, I disagree. Actually, this year has been some sort of a breakthrough year in some ways. You might understand why, because of you know me being at the top for so long. But I found the Australian Open this year for the first time without losing a set in a Grand Slam, which was a, which was a great start to the season. Then I've beaten Rafa Nadal for the first time on clay in Hamburg just prior to the French Open, which was a big breakthrough for me. So I've beaten him now on all surfaces. That gives me great hopes for, for next year. And this is why I will always believe and I'm sure I can do, do it winning the French also if I have to go through Rafa. But it's not always the case. You know, the, the draws change all the time. So here we are on the, uh, the scene of your probable win later on today. Let's hope so, yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly. i got a couple of hours. So. Just after I'm going to warm up with Pete, just right after Indeed, I hit with you, yeah. so should be good. So show me some of your um, signature moves then. Well, my favourite shot is always going to be the forehand. It mm -hmm. used to be always be my favourite shot when I was young, so it's always the one I've won all the points with. Backhand used to be my weakness. Yeah. The serve I was too young and too uh, small and too you know not enough powerful to have a good serve in them when I was young. So my forehand was always my signature shot. Um, so I always used to run around my backhand, you know, use my phone as much as I could and yeah. so that's why I think it's my strengths also today, you know. But what's your strengths today? 
I don't have a strength oh, today. Have one. I'm against Roger Federer. Well, against me, it's different, you know. <laughs> but you, what's your favorite? You prefer a forehand over a backhand? Um, I, I do, but occasionally I get a really good sort of single-handed backhand. Oh, you play single-handed? Sort of, yes. Mm -hmm. I can't do the double-handed. Me neither. Really? No, I can't do it, no. Oh, I feel much better now. Yeah, exactly. You have no idea how much better but I feel. But the serve, I think, is the most difficult, you know, in terms of coordination. Yeah. Because you get the two arms going and you got to toss it up at the right time. So. Exactly, yeah. Well, give us a look, then, at, uh, at your famous forehand. Forehand? Very simple. Try not to miss it, of course. Of you know. course. I'm happy I made it. <laughs> That's so obviously, the trick. You know, Actually, the, almost the best forms you can hit is out of the backhand corner, you know, mm. because you can actually run around and you can, the, this way, the, the way is shorter to hit a winner, but if you go on the other side, you know, you're going to make the guy run, but then you leave yourself vulnerable, obviously, for the, uh, for the forehand court. It's really where I think usually all the guys who have the best forehands, they used to, they like to hit it out of the backhand court, because you can go the other way as well, with a lot of spin, move the guy out of the court, and then you can come in, or you can then take advantage of that shot. Um, I tell you what, I'm going to study your serve very mm. closely because my serves are atrocious. Really? They're so weak. No double folds, though. <laughs> no double folds. That's most folds, important. Exactly. That you don't double fold, you just give away points. You know, you don't want to do that. I know, but the way that I avoid a double fo fault is by making it so weak. It's pathetic. Really? Oh, yeah, no. that's the only way I can get it to stay in. Okay, well, I have to see one serve, but I show you one. Let's go to the baseline. Oh base no! <laughs> I'm going to lose all my viewers. <laughs> <laughs> so. I'll show you one simple serve. Okay. It's actually very, for me, it's a smooth action. You know, I try not to have too many, how do you say, yips or hiccups or whatever in the yeah. serve. I just try to do it very smooth, you know. It's all one motion almost, you know. Because, oh, but uh, of I course, think if you. I can't get the it's, one it's motion. It's all about technique, actually, in the serve. If you can't, you know, you, you actually just want to toss it up. And then, you know, try to get the right timing and have the right grip. Yeah. So you don't shank it, you know, so you have a clean hit on the ball. The thing is also the balls have really slowed down over the years. Um, the string has become more synthetic instead of gut. Right. You know, yeah. and uh, that gives you more spin. So you, we play much further in the, in the court, you know. Mm. We now actually return from back here. We play yeah. from back here, whereas the other guys, they would play from here. So, of course, if you play from here, the court is much smaller. Yeah. And the whole thing goes much quicker. So you play many more half volleys. So games has changed for sure, yeah. How do you keep your cool when the whole stadium is full of thousands of people watching your every move? Yeah, well, I mean, it changes from, uh, from, ve to, from venue to venue, you know. Sometimes the crowds are really uh, incredible, yeah. you know, like loud and, you know, not aggressive, but, you know, like they really want to pump you up. Other ones are very respectful, you mm -hmm. know, so they only clap when you hit a winner. When the other guy hits an unforced air, it's just silent you know so it's very you're awkward. in china now Ex there is no silence yeah, here exactly so that, this is this is going to be good and i have to see this is a really a nice court because also when you look up on the stadium you know you can potentially still see the face of the person and this yeah. is what i like you know when i feel like i'm close to the really? to the fans yes it's nicer when you know they're right there you know oh, i thought you'd want to sort of block them out and just yeah. forget that they're people yeah, but this is just uh, the reaction of a coming into a stadium and then you can feel if it's going to be good crowds or not, you know? Yeah. It's when you know it's not too big and not too small. So, like, between 10 and 15,000 is, is a good number, I think. So what kind of tactics are you going to use against P Pistol Pete today? Well, this Because his serve is... Fantastic. Exactly. It's the best serve of the world. Yeah, and Almost right. still today, honestly. Mm. Yeah. And this court is, plays really fast. So it's going to be really hard to break him. And I think this court really... It's very skiddy, you know, so yeah. when you slice or when you serve out wide on the deuce court, it's very good to, to ace or get the, get the point. So he's going to be attacking first, second serve. I will have to hit good returns and good passing shots. And yeah, I'll, I'll just play aggressive so he can attack. That's my, that's my goal, really. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. That's his line, you know. It's pretty good, you know. He's <laughs> got a pretty good serve, you know. Yeah, right. Good luck. <laughs>